Joshua chapter 24. I want to tell you, Brother Lawrence's family is doing well. God is working in their lives in that automobile accident that the wife and children were <coughs> involved in. God miraculously uh, kept them, saved them. It should have been a head-on collision with a semi, and the highway patrol don't know how it wasn't, but we do. Yes, amen. amen. And so, but I do want you to pray for them. <clears throat> they are having to go through um, physical therapy, things like that. No broken bones or anything like that, but uh, anyway, they are going to have do doctor visits and uh, <coughs> therapy. <clears throat> so, but we're we're gonna keep praying for him, and God wants him to evangelize. It's evident, Amen. And the devil just is trying to stop it. I say that, but I want to say this: God's in control, amen. and He knows all about it, yes, he does. Amen. So He's got some things planned and worked out. Amen. Joshua twenty four fourteen. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve Him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve you the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, we'll choose you this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the god of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is that brought us up, out of, up and our fathers out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and which did those great signs in our sight and preserved us in all the way wherein we went, and among all the people through whom we passed. And the Lord drave out from before us all the people, even the Amorites, which dwelt in the land. Therefore will we also serve the Lord, for he is our God. And Joshua said unto the people, Ye cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins if you forsake the Lord. And serve strange gods. Then he will turn and do you hurt and consume you after that he hath done you good. And the people said unto Joshua, Nay, but we will serve the Lord. Amen. I'm going to take my, my lesson or my message here today from the 15th verse. Joshua said, But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If you'll help me pray this morning. God, we love you. We desperately need your help and the anointing. I feel it right now, God, and I thank you for it, that you're going to help me preach the message that you put on my heart. Lord, help me, God, to follow your spirit, God. Lord, we praise you, God. We ask you to bless each and every soul under the sound of my voice here today. Mighty God, we praise you for it. We thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. I want to preach to you from this title, As For Me. Amen. Can we talk about you today? Can we just take a minute or two and talk about you? Amen. This phrase, As For Me, <laughs> is as personal as it gets. Joshua didn't say, as for the rest of y'all. He said, matter of fact, I don't know what y'all are going to do. He said, if it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day whom you will serve. Now, he mentioned the gods on the other side of the flood, that means before Noah and the ark. Amen. Then he mentioned the God of the Amorites in whose land 
they are now dwelling. Of course, God is getting ready to give them, amen, and has given them some of the land, amen. Uh, maybe even at this point, all of it, but he had this speech. Look, God brought you up out of Egypt. God kept you in the way. God uh, preserved you. Uh, church, their shoes never even wore out in 40 years. Their clothes didn't wear out. Amen. They didn't get old. Now, I don't know if you ever seen a 40-year-old pair of shoes, but they're not normally going to be in good shape unless they've been stored away, unused. But these people used their, uh, their possessions, their shoes, their clothes, but God preserved them. It's just a testament here this morning. That God is able to preserve. Don't you think he's able to sustain you? Don't you think he's able to keep you? Amen. Well, praise God. I think God is able to do anything. I know he's able to do anything. Amen. God can deliver. And he has delivered. God. There's people in here this morning that can testify of the delivering power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Cigarettes, there's no problem for God. Right. Beer and alcohol, that's not a problem for God. Because God knows how to deliver. He knows how to set free. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Depression, that's not a problem for God. Right. Oppression, that's not a problem for God. Being devil possessed, that's not a problem for God. Amen. Amen. I'm trying to find a problem that God can't solve. But God can solve all the problems, even my problems, even your problems. Amen. Praise God. Is anybody going to help me this morning? Amen. Amen. God is able to take care of you through and through. Right. Amen. I believe. He knows how to provide dinner tonight. I believe he can help you pay the bills. I believe he can take a broken life and put it back together. I believe he can take an impossible situation, amen, and just work it out to, to where it seems to you as if it was so simple. How did I not think of that? God is able. Do you know what God is able to do elsewise? He's able to dry up the tears you've been crying. And he's able to answer all the hard questions. Amen. Well, praise God. Come on, you're looking at a, a man today who's had his share of problems. And I've had my share of tears. Come on, I've cried and wondered, God, why couldn't I... Be raised up with a daddy. Where was my daddy? I, I was told that my grandpa said that he was embarrassed of me. I never heard it out of his mouth. And I know my family's been known to be facetious and say some hard things, tell some tall tales. But that's just what was told of me. That my grandparents were embarrassed at the way I was. That there was no way that they could produce offspring that would be crippled. This is what was told to me as a little kid. Amen. I'll tell you what. In the struggle, where, where's my dad? Why do all these other kids have a dad but I don't? Come on. There was a lot of times I didn't know where mama was. Where's mama? Why ain't she here? Why are we always with a babysitter? Why are we with grandma? Why are we with aunt or uncle? Where's mama at? Where's daddy? Where's mama? Come on. Why can't I have a daddy and a mama that just loves me? Oh, they loved me, but you know what I'm talking about. Praise God. I didn't go hungry. I didn't go without clothes. I did go without a haircut sometimes when I needed it. Amen. Right. Praise God. But I'm telling you over the year, there were some tears that I shed wondering why, why, why. The biggest one of them was why do I have to be the way I am if God is a healer? Right. 
Do you know how many church services I've been in where I was begging God, let this be the service? Oh, I'm not trying to make it all personal about pastor here today, but I am telling you that there is a God in heaven who answered every prayer, that solved every problem. Come on, that made it all all right. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm so glad that I never had to experience uh, physical abuse as a child. But there's some that have. I'm telling you right now, the same God that kept me uh, can help you with your problems. Come on, there's got to be some liber- liberty. Yeah. You know what? I'd be in bad shape today if I still sat with my arms crossed. Oh, no. Come on, I'd be in bad shape today if I wouldn't let my mind get over it. Alan, I'm so mad I can't stand it. It ain't been fair to me, God. And by the way, God, I'm still crippled. Oh, I'd be in all kind of bad way uh, if I held my arms up saying, God, it ain't fair. Uh, Lord, I don't like it. Uh, My God, I'm telling you today, we got to let it down. Uh, Come on, get out. I'm telling you, if you'll put them hands up, uh, the Spirit of the Lord will come down. You know what? There's a big difference in this and this. Every one of us has done this. It didn't, did, it didn't get us nowhere. God, you got to make it make sense to me. God don't have to do a thing. I'm telling you, God don't have to do a thing. But you know what he does? In his mercy, he go ahead and explains himself to us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Lord, if you'd have been there, if you'd have just been there, God, come on, if you'd have just been there to keep me, Lord, I wouldn't have gone down this path. I wouldn't have been involved in this. I'm telling you right now, if you get it made up in your mind, I don't care what's back there. I don't care how life's been. Come on, I'm focused on the hereafter. I'm focused on God. Well, I could talk about the gods of the Amorites. I could talk about the gods on the other side of the flood. We will talk about that. Maybe on another Sunday. How many know God is holy? What does holy mean? What does holy mean? You know what? We got this bad idea. A lot of people in the world do when it comes to the word holy. You think you're better than me. That's somebody's definition of holy. Well, you're just one of them goody two-shoes. That's, that's somebody's definition of the word holy. Oh, you like this one. You're one of them holier than thou. Because that's somebody's definition of holy. Oh, hallelujah. But you know what holy is? Holy is... is a, a, God is holy because he's without darkness. He's without sin. He's without a corrupt mind. He don't have curse words come through his head. He don't have perversion in it. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Come on. He's holy. He's absolutely righteous. He's clean through and through. There's not one fault in him. Hallelujah. And here we got a commandment in the word of God. Be ye holy. For I am holy. That's what he said. How do you do that? How do you be holy? Brother James, we could sit down across from a table one another and, and just go into great detail about each other. How unholy we are. And how unholy we've been. You, you and I have been places. Come on. 
I'm telling you right now. Come on, we, we've done things, we've said things, we've seen things, we've read things, we've been involved in things that are absolutely ungodly. Oh, come on, that, ah, that's what the devil gets us all wrapped up in. From the moment we're born, he begins to work on us. He begins to shape us. Hallelujah. Come on. There's some children that develop a, uh, a, an ability to tell lie after lie after lie. And some children don't have a problem with that. But then other children have a problem with stealing and stealing and stealing. And some children don't have a problem with that. They got a problem with their temper. All right. And some children have problems with multiple things. But they were born an innocent little baby. But in the process of time, the devil begins to do his work. Plant little seeds here, little things there. Hallelujah. Little tyke come up to you and saying that filthy word. Boy, where'd you learn that word? Paw paw. Uh-huh. I'm going to wash your mouth out with soap. And he's thinking, what in the world is soap? Is it going to be flavored? Why, well, he don't know. Where do you learn that, Paul? Paul? Hallelujah. I'm, I, I don't have time to spend on it today, but the devil begins to work on us from, from babies. Hallelujah. You know what? You didn't, you didn't just start a bad habit. Somebody influenced you. Well, hallelujah. Come on. There's some young men that don't seem like they're interested in girls at all. And then there's some young men that you, you got to watch them because they can't hardly control themselves. What's the difference? Influence. What's in their heart and their mind. What, what makes people different? Come on. The different influences. What is it that some people are outgoing and laughing and carrying on and some are clammed up and off in a corner in a fetal position, shaking and trembling? It's because different things have happened. Come on, and different people have gone through different things. But I'm telling you what the solution for you and the solution for me and the solution for her, it's all. Because God is one And Jesus is his name Jesus Christ the same Yesterday, today, and forever You know what helps that little That little girl out of the corner When Jesus comes over And says hey sweetheart I'm here It's going to be alright and God begins to influence her. And thoughts of peace come into her mind. And she begins to let this yeah. turn into this. Woo. Hallelujah. You understand me today. It's very important that you decide in your heart and in your mind. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, that, that daddy that's been drinking them beer. Uh, come on, and every time he gets inebriated, hey man, his temper flares up, and he'll throw something across the house, and he'll hit you with his fist. Come on, that same daddy who's lost his mind because of the alcohol. Coming down off of that. Oh, God, what have I done? I didn't mean for that black eye. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean those words. I don't know what got in me. The solution's the same. Mm, it's the same for the alcoholic as it is the guy that never drank a beer. It's the same solution. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Huh? Lord, thank you for the blood. 
Brother James, you got a testimony. And that testimony will cause you to say to someone else, don't, don't do what I did. Don't do what I did. Don't do the drugs. Don't do the alcohol. Don't, don't, don't live the life I lived as a young man. You'll beg somebody. Don't do it. Don't do it. And then you've got someone over here saying, I don't know. It sounds like a lot of fun. It looks like a lot of fun. It's a real pretty picture. Y'all remember how manly and how tempting old Marlboro man was? Now that's a cowboy right there. No, that's just a dude on a horse that sat behind and took a picture. But he sold. They paid him millions of dollars because of the image that he created that caused thousands of young men pick up a cigarette. In their mind, I'm like the marble man. Uh -huh. I'm going to be cool like the marble man. And some of them even went and got him a hat. Marlboro man. But you know what? Oh, Marlboro man died. You know what he died? Lung cancer from all the cigarettes. You know what he's saying? Don't do what I did. I don't care how pretty it is. I don't care how amazing it sounds. Come on, young people, you better listen to me. It might look good, but I'm telling you, it ain't good. I said it might look like fun, but it ain't fun. Come on, let, let some of these elders talk to you. Hey, that's not good to get into. That's not a good habit to start. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Come on. Uh, come on, some of the ideas in your head, uh, some of the thoughts that you're thinking, come on, has gotten other young people in so much trouble. Hallelujah. Come on. The back and the forth, the up and the down, uh, the lies and deceit. Uh, come on. The wishy-washy. It's got them in prison and gotten some of them dead. But God put this on my heart, amen, to preach. Let's talk about you. What are you going to do? You going to serve God? Does God have to make sense to you before you'll say you are the almighty God? Anybody here willing to raise your hand and say God's word is not true? Any of you invincible young men over there, young ladies over here that know everything, it is is God's word not applicable to you? Oh, he was saying that stuff for the older folk. Oh, he was saying it to my brother and my sister over here, but it don't apply to me. Well, then let's just talk about you for a minute. What are you going to decide to do? Are you going to be like one of my old friends, amen, that I haven't seen for years? As soon as he turned 18... I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. I'm going to do what I want to do. As for me, I want to serve the Lord. Well, what does it mean to serve the Lord to you? Oh, it just means a bunch of rules to me. Uh, you don't know anything about God. God is holy. God is holy. There is no lies in God. There is no deception in God. Oh, hallelujah. You know what the deceiving devil has told millions of people? 
go ahead and end it right here because nobody loves you. Look at yourself. You done made so many mistakes. Look at the mess you're in. It's unrecoverable. Nobody loves you. They, they're not going to. They're not going to have no faith in you. They're not going to believe a word you say. Come on, you've done tried over and over. This is what the devil begins to say. There's no hope, but I'm telling you, there is hope. Come on, there is hope. And the solution is the same solution for everybody. Whether you got problems or you think you don't have them, the, pro the solution is still the same. It's Jesus Christ. Uh, come on, it's the Holy Ghost. Uh, Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, come on. Every man, woman, and child that is ever born on the face of this earth, uh, they have to make a decision. Amen. Because whether you know it or not, we are all barreling toward eternity. Right. Hallelujah. Come on. I, 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 in my mind, I thought... Uh, that I was going to have my mother until she was way up in her 80s. But you know what? She never made it to her 62nd birthday. Hallelujah. Come on. I, 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 just, I just know. Come on, young person. We all just know that we're going to live forever and be strong forever. But we're all barreling toward eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. You young people can run around this building so fast, so agile. Amen. But look around at the grown-ups around here. Every single one of them used to could run just like you. Amen. Don't you remember the good old basketball playing yeah. days? Yeah. Amen. Where it was hard to beat you. Yeah. Well, praise God. But now it's hard to even dribble and walk. Well, I'm telling you right now. You know why? Because time is changing us. Amen. That bright, sharp mind you got. Listen to me. For just a little while longer, I'm almost done. But that bright, sharp mind you got that's so quick-witted, that's so quick to say something smart, and someday, someday it's going to forget something so simple. And it's going to cause you frustration because it's right there on the tip of your tongue. And you don't understand why you can't function like you used to. But it's a thing called time. Hallelujah. Oh, you ought to have seen a picture of my 16-year-old grandmother. Woo! Don't look nothing like she did at 86. Uh, Bubba James, you can let them boys feel those muscles of yours, them hard working arms. He ain't embarrassed, he don't get embarrassed. You let them boys figure out how in the world did he drive that nail so straight with one or two licks. And I can't even get it started. <laughs> how is he so smart that he figured that out and made it look good? You just, you just pay attention to me, Brother James. One day they're going to run off and leave you. Dad, I got some other things to do. Matter of fact, I've gotten good at it too. They're going to quit calling on you for how do you do this? How do you do that? How do I solve this problem? You know why? Because time just changes things. But you know what a decision is that don't have to change? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. And I won't turn back. I won't turn back. Well, what if I get started living for God and then I get bored with it? Oh, yeah. Can I just say it like that? What do I do with my eyeballs? There they are. Can I just say it like that? I take them off when I... When I feel like I don't need to see. <laughs> hey. What, what, where was I? 
See, you get old, you forget. You get bored. Anybody ever got bored? When you got all the work done, you know why you get bored in, in church and in living for God? Because there has been a significant, you look at it any time, any place. If you're bored living for God, listen to me. It's because there is a significant amount of time that you have spent drifting away. Oh, you don't hate God. I'm not saying that. Oh, you know the scriptures, you know the Ten Commandments, all of that. That never left you. But there's a little space of time where you've drifted away. All right. Good. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. You let your best friend slip on away from you. Not say hello very often not talk to you very often. Pretty soon, you'll realize there's nothing between us. Ain't anything there. You know why? Because there's been a separation. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, but if you'll, if you'll check in, say, hey, friend, how you doing? How's your week this, this time? How's the Monday going? Mondays aren't usually good, but how's it going today? And they're keeping up with one another. How many know you got a circle of people in your life? You got a real close circle. Then you got another tier of people that's a little bit further away. Huh? Does anybody in here don't know who your neighbor is? Don't know him by name? Amen. You don't get out much. <laughs> uh huh? They don't get out as much. Hey, neighbor! Been here 10 years and I ain't met you yet. Might as well come on out. If you find a neighbor that'll stay put for 10 years, you're... Well, anyway. <laughs> Separation. You know what? It's at that gap. That gap right there between God and where you're at is dangerous ground. Hallelujah. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. I didn't even get to a sixth of my scriptures here today. Amen. God told Abraham, or this is what he said about Abraham, I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. And the Lord, that the Lord may bring up Abraham, bring upon Abraham that which he hath spoken of him. Amen. I know him. What does God know about you and I today? Man, I want my boys and my girls to live for God. But I ultimately know that they're going to have to make the decision. And Brother James, they can't blame, well, Daddy, you prayed. But if you'd have prayed a little bit more, I might have learned to pray just like you. Now, you I, I know. I know that sentiment. We heard it the other day. Brother Brown's up here preaching, and he did a good job. Amen. Children are going to learn from their parents. That's right. Children do. But I'm going to tell you what, I know men who have prayed and prayed and prayed. And their children. Come on. It's, you know why? Because it has to be as for me. As for me. Did you know, children, you're going to have a house of your own? 
and you're going to have children of your own, and you're going to have jobs and lives of your own. One of these days, you're going to say, Dad, you're going to have to find somebody else to help you. I'm too busy. Yep. And me and Mama's going to be sitting at the house all alone. Don't worry about us. We'll be throwing a party. <laughs> Woo! You know what we're going to do? We're going to invite all our old friends over. <laughs> Woo! Well, hallelujah. As for me. As for me. You know what makes an old saint? I'm done here today, but I want you to hear me. Children, hear me. You know what makes an old saint? A young saint that decided, as for me. Listen to me, children. As for me, as for me, in my house, we will serve the Lord. Son, daughter, you can go do whatever you want to do when you get your own place. But as for me in my house, oh yeah. Come on. There's not going to be any Marilyn Manson posters on my wall. Come on. They, they, well, hallelujah. Yeah. There's not going to be any Marlboro men hanging on my walls. Right. No Budweiser pictures hanging on my walls. Oh. Hallelujah. And I can go on and on and on. The reason, Sister Harrington, as for me, this is what I'm going to do. I don't care about rule. I, God can give me ten more rules if he so desired to do so. But you know why I'm going to accept it? Because I want to make heaven my home. Yeah. It ain't about rules to me. If your boss come to you today and said, if you'll do this, this, and this, there's a $5,000 bonus waiting at the end of the week. You know what? As long as it ain't sin and immoral, and has everything to do with the company, you're going to say, well, let me get started immediately. Yeah. Well, you could have gave me the 5000 without all the extra stipulations. That's what we tell God. I'll live for you, God, but I don't want to do what you say. I'll go to church, God, and I'll be a Christian, but I don't want to. As for me and my house, you know what? Forget about rules and regulations. Get the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Just get the Holy Ghost. Come on, let's love the Lord right now. Hallelujah. It's, it's about the Holy Ghost. Come on, can we love Him right now? Young person, you need to love the Lord right now. Hallelujah. Come on, young lady, you need to love God right now. Ah, come on, young man, you need to love God right now. Come on, I have decided to follow Jesus. Uh, come on, I have put him in my heart and in my mind. Uh, I understand that the devil's there to try to change my mind, uh, try to trip me up, uh, try to make me make mistakes. Uh, but I'm telling you, my mind's made up. Uh, come on, I've got my foot uh, on the rock. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, and my name's written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. Uh, I'm going to live for God Joshua said as for me as for me did you know God has given especially the ministry he's given them authority and power power to heal the sick power to Cast out devils. I can read it to you. This is the authority that he gave the man of God. Amen. But you got to understand something. That man in Mark chapter 5. 
that one that was bound by the devil. Are you listening to me today? That one that was bound by the devil. It was him that got up and saw Jesus from afar and begun to ran, run. Run to meet him. It was the devil-possessed man that made it up in his mind. I don't care about these shackles. Uh, I don't care about these tombs. Uh, I don't care about these devils. I don't care about the darkness in my life. I don't care about the mistakes. Uh, I don't care about any of that. I see a man who can deliver me. Uh, I see the glory of God on him. I see the power of God. Uh, amen. I see him for who he is. And the Bible says that he ran and fell at the feet of Jesus. And worshipped him. I don't care how bound or how bad it is in life. The minute you decide. As for me. I'm going to walk with God. I'm going to pray when I need to pray. I'm going to read this Bible. I'm going to get a hold of it. It's the Holy Ghost that will help you quit drinking. It's the Holy Ghost that will help you with cigarettes. It's the Holy Ghost that will help you with gambling. It's the Holy Ghost that, well, praise God. It's the Holy Ghost that'll help you with, uh, 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 keep that, that'll help you not to curse. Yes. Amen. Amen. The Holy Ghost. Without it, you can only help yourself so far. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand this morning. Amen. It's a very simple message here today. I know I've not gone as deep as I could have. Amen. We didn't get to Psalms 101. Amen. We didn't get to Psalms 119 today. Joshua 6. Acts 11, Matthew 16, Hebrews 11. We didn't get to none of that today. I want you to focus on you today. Some of you are waiting for me to end it. Close out the service. Go home and eat. Get on the phone. Get on the computer. Get on whatever. That's what some of you are waiting for to happen. But God is trying to get your attention this morning. What are you going to do? What about you? Where's your heart? Where's your mind? Brother James, to me, I, I could, if God said, if God said drinking water was off limits for me, I'd quit drinking water. I'd have to go to Mountain Dew or something. As long as it didn't have water in it. I guess I'll have to drink coffee. Well, it's got water in it. I'm in a mess. But if it was something as simple as that, I want to do it. Because I want to be pleasing to God. Hallelujah. Let's love him right now one more time. God, come on, make up your mind. Ma'am, sir, young ma'am, young lady, make up your mind. What if your friends aren't going to live for God? What if your mom and daddy ain't going to live for God? What if? But what about you? It's not dependent on anybody else. It's dependent on you and what you have decided. Hallelujah. Come on. As for me in my house. As for me in my house. Amen. Come on. Live for God. Be godly. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, somebody's got to make a decision. I'm trying to help you today. 
You make the right decision today and you'll be saved from trouble tomorrow. Hallelujah. Come on, if you'll submit to God today, hallelujah, you'll quit going in that big circle you've always gone in. Come on, us as humans, we tend to make circles. Come on, we tend to go in circles. You know it. I know it. Amen. Come on. But I'm telling you with the power of the Holy Ghost, we don't have to circle back around to our problems. Hallelujah. As for me, as for me, I have decided I'm going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody want to pray today? Anybody want to talk to God today? Amen. I've, I've closed this sermon down early today. Amen. Praise God. I'm telling you here right now, God wants to visit with you. God wants to talk with you. Amen. God wants to give you a power and authority over the devil. Amen. Praise God. Come on. He wants to make a way for you out of that temptation. I'm telling you right now, you just got to have a made up mind. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Him. Praise Him. I love you, Jesus. I don't know what you've decided to do. But I've decided I'm going to serve God. Amen. And God is able to make us perfect. Amen. Well, James, I've made a lot of mistakes in the 30-something years I've been living for God. A lot of mistakes. Young people, you're going to make mistakes. But the, but the main thing you got to get figured out today is, all right, this is what I'm going to do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sister Hannah, does the children have anything today? All right. Praise God. Well... I want you to go home today and consider this. Please don't forget the word of the Lord this morning. Amen. Please think about this. What am I going to do with my life? I don't want to influence nobody else in their decision. But what am I going to do? What am I going to become? Where am I going to be? What am I going to do? And what God am I going to serve? Amen. You may want to be here Wednesday or tonight or whenever it is God puts it on my mind. But I'm going to talk to us about the strange gods. I don't feel like people talk about the strange gods. They just mention them. Thou shalt have no other God before me. That's what the scripture says. Well, I want to talk to you about what the strange gods are, who they are, what they sound like, what they act like. Amen. Amen. If you know who the enemy is, you can fight him a whole lot better. If you don't know where he is or who he is or what he sounds like, you won't know that he's there. Amen. Praise the Lord.